I propose to take PQ 16 and 41 together. That's correct. The public service superannuation provides for an increase to the age of 70 in the compulsory retirement age of most public servants before the 1st of April. The Act provides that I, as Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform, will, within three months of the passing of the Act, prepare and lay before the Oireachtas a report on public servants who were forced to retire between the 6th of December 17 and the commencement of the Act due to reaching the age of 65 years and on potential remedies to assist this cohort of worker. As the deputies are aware, public servants who reached the compulsory retirement age of 65 before the new legislation was enacted were required to retire in accordance with the statutory compulsory retirement age in effect at the time. Those who availed of the interim arrangements did so in the knowledge that the contract was for a year only until they reached the age of 66. The Public Service Superannuation Act of 18 has no effect on those public servants who availed of the interim arrangements. The terms of their fixed term contracts will continue to apply and they will cease working at age 66 as previously provided. Work on the report under Section 3A subsection 6 has commenced. The report will be prepared in accordance with the provisions and timelines prepared for in this Act. When we were dealing with the legislation, I think both myself and uh, Deputy Cohen outlined this particular cohort of people and the unfairness uh, attached to them. And there was a commitment given that the report would address these issues. Um, I'm now kind of hearing that the report is not going to address uh, this particular cohort of people, that they just have to retire uh, at 66 and that's it. Um, and maybe you can confirm that, uh, Minister. Um, the Minister, during the passage of that legislation and on, on, on foot of amendments put forward by us both, did agree that because of the fact that he couldn't be retrospective in the application of the legislation, that he did agree to uh, bring forward this report, as has been alluded to, within three months. And I'm just wondering, what are we still at that time frame? And if we are, when can we expect its publication? Uh, I don't expect any indication of how it will be resolved until such time as the report is before the House. Ask Minister O'Donovan just to take that particular point. Um, Count Corla, at the time of the legislation we undertook uh, on foot of Deputy Cowan's amendment to, to uh, insert into the bill um, a provision for a report, and as Minister Dunham says, the report is underway. And as I said at the time of the drafting or the passage of the bill through the House, uh, both in the Dáil and in the Shannon, and deputies agreed with me, we also have to be cognisant. Yes, there is a cohort of people here that we all shared in terms of concern for them, but we all had to be, also had to be cognisant of those members of the public sector who did not avail of those interim arrangements. And if we were to enter into an, an, an arrangement which the Attorney General advised us uh, was not possible without legislative remedies anyway on foot of this report, where would it leave those public servants who retired with a commitment from the government that these interim arrangements were just that? Uh, and the advice that I had at the time, and we had a good discussion here in the House and at committee stage was, and we all agreed, what were we going to do with those public servants who decided not to enter the interim arrangements? And there wasn't really an answer forthcoming in that. And I do understand, and it was uh, pointed out, and I understood, and the government understood at the time, that yes, there was you know, a difficulty for those people. Uh, but I think Minister Dunahoo, when he announced the bill, uh, announced the, um, the parameters of the legislation, and when the bill was brought into the House, it was made very clear at the time, uh, unfortunately, for the people concerned, that there were interim arrangements, and interim arrangements only for a year. And actually, some Thank people you, had sir. actually fallen out of that interim arrangement during the course of the passage of the legislation, or the delay of the legislation as well. Deputy O'Brien. I disagree with what the Minister was saying, but it was my understanding that the report was going to look at possible remedies yep. to this situation. Uh, I mean, we all uh, accepted the advice that you were given in relation to this particular cohort of people who may not have accepted the interim arrangements um, and the unfairness in relation to that, but it was certainly my understanding that we were going to look at this particular issue as part of the report and hopefully come up with some way forward or some solution, whether it was through legislation or otherwise, nobody could actually say until the report was complete. But that's not the impression I'm getting now in terms of what the report is going to indicate. 
but we we look, we look, we'll just have to wait for the report. Hey, Colin. Yeah, no, um, going that far, I've ever felt the commitment that was given at the time that a report would be put before the House, to, which would uh, possibly offer remedies to those to that cohort that we we all agree. Uh, were left in somewhat of a limbo by virtue of the fact that the announcement and the enactment and the year's grace was too, it was still a core caught in the middle. So just to confirm, if the Minister can, when he expects the report to be finalised. Well, as Minister Dunahoo said, work has already started uh, and we did give a commitment in the, in the legislation that we would work within the time frame of the bill. But I was very clear to point out at that time, both in here and the Shannon, that while there is a report that may be laid before the Oireachtas, it may, not very, it may not provide the remedies that we all hope. And if there is a remedy, which there, you know, hypothetically, it may require legislative uh, effect. Um, but I made it very clear at the time. The government made it very clear at the time that there may not be a remedy coming forward that taking into account those who are in disarrangements, but also as importantly, if not more importantly, those who did not avail of those interim arrangements because of the very clear commitment that the government made, which was that those that entered into the interim arrangement were doing so for one year and one year only, and that there would be no continuation regardless of when the legislation passed. I understand the concerns. I think the government and everybody in the House understands the concerns. But based on the commitment that was given at the time of the publication of the bill, we were left with the decision that we were left with when the, when the bill passed into law. Question 17 is Deputy Thomas. Sorry. Yes, briefly. Rather than preempt the contents and the negative con uh, connotation you put on that contents, when will the report be forthcoming? As Minister Dunham said, the work is underway. We gave a commitment within the time frame. I don't want to be—I don't want the deputy for it to be suggested that it is a negative connotation. I want the House to be—I want to be very upfront with the House. When I, when I agreed to accept that amendment at the time, I did so in the full knowledge that this is not a panacea or a magic wand, and I don't want to have false hope held out to those people. They had a difficulty themselves at the time when they entered into that arrangement, and I want to be upfront with them. If there is a report, or when the report comes before the House, if there are remedies there, I said at the time the government would look at them, but I also want to be realistic and upfront with people as well, based on the advice that we received from the Attorney-General. 